another exciting episode of Smith Street 86. I'm Charlotte. And I'm Krista. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm so glad to be back with Yay. you guys. It feels Looking very... beautiful and tanned. Yeah. I feels, it feels great to be back, honestly. It feels really nice to be back. I feel really pale, but it's okay. But that's okay. I'll be fine. But this week, we're talking all about music. Yeah, I love mm. music. What's your favourite type of music? Oh, my favourite type of music has to be jazz, folks. Get a trumpet and a guitar and there's your band. Right there, we're going to play some jazz. I don't know if that's a band. I think that's like a duo. No, no. Trumpet sure. and, no. yeah, okay. That's it's, okay. It's going to be great, okay? Yep. It's going to be great. Yeah. And now it's that time of the week again where we talk about the 3D printer. Mm. And visit the 3D printer superstore and guess what they're printing out for us this week. Yeah. And don't forget that we have three hints to help us out along the way. Hint number one is... Paranormal. X-Files. X-Files. It's got to be. Something ghost-like. I don't know. This way it gets a bit, it's a bit strange, it's like isn't a it? platform. It does look like a bit of a platform. I can see it forming, kind of. It's going to be something to do with that. Like something ghosty. Like yeah. Something ghost it's got to be something, obviously, paranormal. Duh. Ooh. Well, duh. Ooh. But up next, we have a story about different methods of learning music. Ooh. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, in a way. It's good, but it's a curse, I'll say. I don't get into something to express emotions or something. For me, it's I'm an emotional person, so I really connect to like, the emotions of the song. It makes me happy I can play and forget about anything else. In year seven, when I picked up the flute, I started lessons once a week. Well, to start off, it was by ear and then along come tabs. My dad always had a drum kit around and sort of jumped on it one day and started having a hit and then I did a bit of lessons. Definitely listening to music, as well as going and see live bands. I like playing covers and then doing my own thing over the top of them, like hip-hop songs, songs that don't really have drums, just like a beat. That's cool, and then you can do what you want. Don't intend on being creative. It's just something that happens. The hardest thing that I've found with playing the flute is I struggle with sight reading. You get a piece of sheet music and you're able to read what it is off the bat. Finger coordination was a bit to get used to. I started with piano, so I started that pretty young. I found the transition from piano to guitar, it was very, uh, <laughs> very fiddly, so I kind of had to stop one and play the other. Learned some pretty bad techniques. <laughs> it was like a year down a track I had to rejig everything. The noise is hard, I can't play whenever I want to. I've got to wait for the family to go out. I can't play when Dad wants to watch TV. <laughs> I go through a lot of sticks and cymbals. I'm a bit of a hard hitter, so it gets a bit pricey. I love the music, man. Just listening to new tunes every day. There's just so many different bands out there that you can go and listen to and give you inspiration. A lot of people in my high school dropped out of the instrument, I guess. I think with everything you need to practice, if you don't practice playing an instrument, you will forget. Being on stage and playing in front of crowds is a good feeling. The other people hearing your music, showing off your skills, I guess. Something that I would always love to do, performing in a musical score ensemble for like a big movie. For me, I want to put music out there that is good quality. We've written up like a plan. It's very much just a lot of practice, networking, because I mean you have to find bandmates. If you've got a favourite artist, I'll just research and watch as many videos of him as you can. And his influence as well goes back 30, 40 years and you get right to the crux of it. But instruments take a lot of work. You have to be passionate about something. You have to be interested in something to be able to do it. so interesting. When did you, did you start learning an instrument when you were little? I'm pretty sure I started learning quite young yeah. actually. Yeah, it was about maybe four or five. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. too, not too sure. I remember to there's a picture of me sitting on um, my godfather's lap playing the piano at like two. Wow. Not that I knew what I was doing. But yeah. that's all right. 
This week on Chatback, Hannah is on the streets of Melbourne asking, what is musical therapy? Yeah. What is it? What is it? Do you know what music therapy is? Actually, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm guessing it just involves, like, sounds like the ocean, like when you sleep. It's like when you're sleeping and, like, you hear whales singing, I guess. Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm guessing um, using music in some therapeutic capacity to make people relaxed or to help them deal with, I don't know, any problems or issues they might have. What do you think would happen in a music therapy session or how do you think it would kind of work? Uh, is it like someone uh, laying down and getting music played at them? Uh, it depends. It could be, um, I don't know, maybe like people uh, just engage with like therapeutic sounds. So just exploring instruments and like making noises that feel good. Or maybe it could be, um, you know, like lyrical or text-based where they work through something, possibly with writing songs, I don't know. Why would you or wouldn't you ever consider music therapy for yourself? Uh, if, if it was beneficial, um, I'd try it. It sounds like it might help, like listening to calming music helps me sometimes, so getting it done professionally would be good. Maybe only in a more abstract way, like just listening to something really relaxing or soothing. Yeah, in that capacity, which I think, you know, that's what music does. If you were to participate in a music therapy session, what do you think you'd expect to hear or what might not work? Uh, maybe, I suppose, uh, heavier mu music wouldn't work, but maybe some, maybe some, I don't know, light jazz or something like that, something, yeah, calming, the, maybe a few sound effects birds and things. I guess it would really depend on the person and what they were you know presenting with like what they wanted help with. Maybe they just want something really abstract and, and soothing or maybe they want to deal with some content with lyrics or something like that. What do you think the results might be after a music therapy session and how do you think it might help people? Uh, it could just be like any sort of relaxation or meditation. It might be like a meditative thing where it's like calms you down on the inside and you just feel sort of you know calm all day like after you meditate or something maybe yeah all right thanks so much it's wow. pretty interesting how everyone seems to have a different idea of what music therapy is and how it all works yeah. what kind of music would you want to hear if you participate in music therapy uh a bit of mozart a bit of classical yeah, yeah that sounds great soothe me anyway let's take a break we'll see you right after the break yeah yeah let's do it after we have a break Mm. Mm. Break. 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 Welcome back, guys. It's time to check on the 3D printer. Yes, yes. But first, hint number two. 80s film character. Ooh. Ooh. What could it be? Let's take a look. I totally know what it is. Don't tell me. Please totally don't know what it me. is. I don't know what it is. You know what it is. No. 80s film, like, character. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Is it like Marty McFly? But that's not paranormal. So, I don't know it's what like I'm saying. It's like green and like, blah, 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 blah. Looks like a big piece of blob to me. Yeah. Mm. So earlier we heard some thoughts on music therapy. Let's listen to what the experts have to say. Mm. Mm. Music therapy is um, a profession where uh, trained therapists are working with people to improve their health and well-being and using music in a really targeted way uh, to improve health and well-being outcomes. I was tossing up between careers and I was in love with psychology and I was in love with music. I visited a nursing home where my nonna was. I played piano for her and she's got progressive supernuclear palsy so she can't talk or communicate but you could see her light up because I was playing and not just her but the people around her. There's something about music that just brings a lot of joy. There's really three main theories I think around why music is good for us and therefore why you would use music as a therapy. Music coming into the brain and playing instruments you're using a lot of your body and so a lot of your brain is getting exercised as well. So for people who have had a brain injury of some sort, actually playing music 
can help restore some of the function that they have. Music has been used throughout cultures for everyone to feel connected to each other. So a lot of tribal things, group dances are about bringing that whole community together. Right from early on in our life, if you think about babies, it's very musical. So parents make crazy sounds with their voices and babies make the sounds back. And what we think is happening there is that actually babies are learning how to communicate and socialise because of the musical shapes that they're involved in. And that's actually the earliest learning about language. I actually worked with a music therapist and she specialised with people with disabilities, people from ages 12 to 50. And what I did notice is as soon as she walked through the door, their spirits lifted automatically because they recognised her therapy gives them you know something that happens at a certain time on a certain day so it just helps them to get used to the fact that life is about a routine. A typical music therapy session um, involves a lot of music making so uh, I work with children with autism traditionally they might have difficulty interacting with people socially they might not be that keen on coming up and playing with you Music's got this great uh, ability to really draw people in to connecting with each other. So I might start playing my guitar and the child will hopefully be interested in that and want to come over and touch the guitar and through that, through interacting with me, then we can start to work on some social and communication outcomes for them. think about heavy metal music and um, maybe something like Megadeth, music therapists are still going to work with that and engage with that because if ultimately if that's what is meaningful to the person and gets them going then that's where we start. What comes with that is that we write a lot of music. So we write the music for the people that we're working with or we actually encourage them to co-write songs with us could literally be anything to seek out a music therapist because across the board everybody loves music and everybody can be affected by music. Just want to make it more aware that and, and progress the field in this country because I feel like there's so many people that would benefit from it. And now it's time for us to introduce our brand new and very special segment, Trivia, Trivia Time! time. Woo! Woo! Every week, Charlotte and I will be asked a series of topical questions, each correct answer giving points, adding up to determine who will win the grand prize, our 3D printed object of the day. And now introducing our beautiful host, Caitlin. Woo! All righty, today I'm going to be asking questions about music. Oh, okay. okay. All righty, first question, which of the following artists have won the most Grammys? Is it A, <laughs> so bad at U2, B, Taylor Swift, or C, George Salty? Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. So, pick whichever one. All right, and reveal your answers. A and B. Well, the correct answer was C, George Salty. Who is George Who the hell No is one knows. George Salty? No one knows. Just, uh, just that I he didn't won even the most. I enjoy Tyler Swift. I'm <laughs> like, surely she's good for you something. Would have Next thought. question. All right. Not including sharps and flats, musical notes range from A to what? Is it E? It's A, E. Is it B, F? Or is it C, G? <laughs> I got this one. Alrighty, and answers? Oh. C. Alright, both correct. Yay! Yay! Both musically talented. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next question. A series of notes that change pitch is called what? Is it A, a melody, B, rhythm, or C, tone? Oh, crap. Alrighty, and <laughs> when you're ready, reveal your answers. Oh gosh. Correct. <laughs> yeah! so oh my God, that was a total guess. I'm <laughs> sorry, that was hard. That no, was hard. no worries. Alrighty, moving on. <laughs> so we've got MTV mm. went live August 1st, 1981. Which classic 80s hit was their first video? Was I it A, no idea. Thriller by Michael Jackson, 
B, Video Killed the Radio Star by The Buggles, or C, Walk This Way by Aerosmith and Run DMC. God. I'm so bad at trivia. This is such a bad idea. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, my right. God. You can guess. That's fine. All right. It's all again. Let's see your answers. Like it's all again. I don't know. You both thought Thriller. You're both wrong. Ah! <laughs> it was Video <laughs> Killed the Radio Star oh, by the Buggles. Like, oh, this is a disaster. All right. All right. All right. All right. One last question. And then Where's my thing? It is a picture question. <laughs> mm, okay. What yeah. is this symbol? Is it A, a quaver, B, a bass clef, or C, a starve? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Come on, Kristen, you got this, kiddo. A, quaver, B, bass clef, C, starve. Okay. All right. I better gonna, know this. I'm going to go. All righty. I'm going to go for it. Going? Answers. Are we going? Got answers. The correct answer was B. Yes! <laughs> Years of Amy B theory, yes! Worth for something. All right, yeah. damn it. So we'll get the, the, the tally from the uh, oh, adjudicator. Yeah, what do we got? Who wins? Charlotte wins! Yes! And you win the 3D printed Woo! object at the end so of the episode. Sad. Yes! I am oh. so bad at trivia. I will never win anything again. And yes. I thought I was a legend at music. <laughs> Remember okay. that? Remember that, kids? I That's all right. I remember. Yay! Well, thank you very much, Caitlin, for being our host. Yes. And now we're going to take a break and I'm going to celebrate. You can celebrate with me. I will celebrate with yep. you. Again, uh, I can't stop thinking about what that 3D printer could be. Uh, Let's read the last hint. The final hint is, who are you gonna call? Let's look at it. Yeah. Do we know what it is? <laughs> yes, we do. Know. <laughs> yeah. We know. We know. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> It's got to be that slug thing from Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our next story is a look into the benefits of recording music in a professional studio. Let's check it out. If you can't bother, then why should I bother listening to it? And that's what you've got to think. If I'm not bothering investing, or if I don't think it's worth putting decent artwork, then why would anybody else think it's worth doing? Why would they waste their time of day to listen to my recordings if I can't even be bothered making it look decent? I've been in the band for maybe, I think, two years now, three years. Myself, I've been playing music since high school, the guitar and singing, and then decided to really make something of it. I've got a little bit of a home studio set up. The main issue is that I just don't have the sound engineering experience to get a good quality sound out of the equipment I've got. Constant supply of gear for people to record at home, it adds to the confusion of the marketplace. We've always done projects and give people a vehicle or a reason to record, you know, be part of some project or part of some release. We're not really trying to compete, we're just trying to create our own work. Before you move into a professional studio, I'd say definitely make the effort to try and record yourself beforehand and really listen to your songs and try and make any improvements you can before you go into the studio. It will really save you a lot of money. Do as much pre-production at home and if you've got a home studio then that's what it's for. It wasn't really invented to replace recording studios, it was meant to be a fantastic pre-production tool so you could get the arrangements right, you could test out everything and rehearse the recording as it were before you actually made the final recording. Working with a sound engineer definitely helps, like they've always got their own opinions and ideas that really help you get through it. It could be anything, like maybe a bit of timing advice or they might think maybe the vocals sound a bit better, sung a bit differently. So just minor things that help sort of really get that extra edge on your song. We really didn't expect the sound engineer to have as many good ideas for changing our songs as we thought. Definitely the professional studio added a lot more to our songs than we thought it would. At home, you're working on your own sort of time and you're not committed to do anything to a deadline so with you in your studio you've got other people counting on you to come in and make some music. You get more ideas flowing and everyone sort of helps each other to get the songs or the album or EP or whatever you're doing up to professional quality. It's not just about writing the songs or 
being a good guitar. You're going to have to manage yourself in the industry, you're going to have to market yourself, you're going to have to do all these different things which will determine whether you succeed or not. They've got to treat it as a business. They've got to work hard in every respect. As soon as your band feels like you've got a song that you're happy with and you're ready to record it, don't wait. Go to a professional studio and get it recorded. I mean, if it sounds really good, then great, you've got a good song. And if it doesn't, then you've at least got some experience in working in a studio and you'll be better next time. It's worth every dollar because you're paying for the experienced sound engineer to get you the last 20% of quality, which is what's most important, I think. Make something that you believe in and do it as best as you can. Studio, huh? I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know, honestly. Anyway. All right, Kristen, it's finally time for 3D print reveal. But first, let's read back over our three hints. Hint number one. Paranormal. Hint number two. 80s film character. Hint number three. Who are you going to call? Can we please have one last look? Let's look at it. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> I think I know what it is. Ah! Ah! Oh my god, I love it! Oh, Look at his so little cute. hands. Oh. It's like a cute little blob. As always, a big thank to our friends at the 3D Printer Superstore for this wonderfully spooky treat. I love it was it. actually quite cute. I really I love really, it. I really do. And love don't it. forget to check out our Facebook and Instagram because we're all about the social media as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. See you later. Bye.